Now down to the pitcher, number 25, Adam Vaughn. And away we go. Runners at second and third. 0-2 count to the pitcher Vaughn. Starting a little bit late. And hopefully things are eating underway. Hopefully everyone can hear me just fine. I want the game just a little bit. And there we go. 0-2 count to Vaughn. And takes one upstairs for a ball. Going to be Kate Haunt at third base. Gunnar Apsek at second. Roger Hernandez just struck out. One away here on top of the first inning. Pitch to Vaughn is popped in the air to right field. Right fielder coming in. Makes the catch. Hot's going to attack. The throw to the play will be in plenty of time to get the out. Very nice indeed. Wasn't quite deep enough as Vaughn flies into a double play. So after a half inning, our score, Cedar Park Timberwolves, nothing. ECU, Georgetown Patriots coming up. Good evening, everybody. My name is Brian. I'll be filling in for Brad Cohn. In this broadcast, as we're starting a little bit earlier due to the um, inclement weather in the area, so hopefully the rain decides to stay away and we can play some baseball tonight. So I must apologize, I am still getting everything situated, but I want to make sure I got on the air as fast as possible so, I, so you guys won't be missing any of the Cedar Park Timberwolves. So give me one moment while I fill in my lineup car. And there we go. So lineup for your Cedar Park Timberwolves. K. Hot batting first, playing second base. Batting second, playing right field. Be Gunner Absec. Ryder Hernandez batting third, playing shortstop. Vaughn batting fourth, playing pitcher. Revere playing first base, batting fifth. Swift batting sixth and playing third base. McDonald in center field batting seventh. Molinaro playing in left field batting eighth. And catching tonight batting ninth will be Brett's. For these few Patriots it will be Tyler Huerta playing right field, batting first, and Tyler Champagne, pitcher, batting second. Only in high school softball do you see a pitcher batting second, unless your name is Shohei Otani, in which case it happens about every other day. Bottom of the first inning for the Patriots. fielder number 11, Tyler Huerta. That is a first as far as walk-up music it goes. I've never heard someone use yellows, oh yeah. But yet, I think it should happen more often. Vaughn steps in, right-hander delivers, and Huerta swings and misses to the first pitch.
The one pitch is upstairs and outside for a ball. It's one and one. As 1-1 one, one pitch catches the corner, it's 1-2. and two. One, two pitch is weakly hit but foul at the plate. We'll do it again in 1-2. and two. One two pitch is just got a piece of that one is Huerta and stays alive at one and two. Mons ready to kick and deliver. Swing and a miss. Strike three for a strikeout. Of the game for Vaughn, first out of the inning, and I'll bring up Tyler Champagne, the pitcher. Pitch to Champagne, shows bunt, pulls the bunt back, takes one outside as the umpire doesn't move. Looks like she got stuck in that position for a little bit. One oh pitches swung on a miss, it's one and one to Champagne. One one. Upstairs outside, two balls, one strike to Tyler Champagne. So it's the bottom of the first inning. There's no one on, one out. Scores nothing, nothing. Patriots against the Timberwolves. The 2-1 pitch. Smacked in the air to left field. That one is going to carry, but will it stay fair? It will. No, they're going to say it's a home run. Champagne gets it just over. Left field foul pole. I thought that one had carried foul from my angle. Not sure you can see it in the camera shot. You cannot, unfortunately. But the Patriots jump out to a one nothing lead. Two batters in. McKinney McLaughlin steps in now with Score one nothing in favor of the Patriots. Leg kick and delivery from Vaughn misses upstairs and outside. As McLaughlin pops one up, Absec comes over underneath it, makes the catch for the second out of the inning. So Jaden Reynolds, third baseman, he'll step in. Two gone here in the bottom of the first inning as Vaughn delivers one low. One oh pitch is fouled away. It's one and one. Adam Vaughn comes into this game with a five and oh record. It's a one one pitch. Misses upstairs and then outside two balls, one strike. Starting eight games. Me up sixteen. 
earned runs. Make that 17 now after that with an ERA of 273. As he floats one in there for a strike, it's two and two. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Tried to get in the chase, but caught a piece of that one. Reynolds is ready. Vaughn gets the sign. 2-2 two -two from Adam Vaughn is cut on and missed for strike three. Second strike out of the game for Vaughn. Third out of the inning. However, these few Patriots get one on the Tyler Champagne homer to left field. After a complete inning, our score, Eastview Patriots won. Your Cedar Park Timberwolves, nothing. Listening to Cedar Park Timberwolves baseball on the Vibe Media Network. In between innings, I want you guys to know about Adele Goff. Adele Goff, top tier makers of custom clubs, EAS model putters, wedges, single length irons, golf digest just awarded their EAS putters, gold medals in the blade and mallet categories. Adele Goff, groundbreaking products that shift the thinking of the golf equipment industry. Adele Goff, where you go to get better. Simplify your game, single length, single swing, your aim, your choice. That's E D E L golf.com. Single length irons, I believe that's what um, PJ Tour player um, Bryson DeChambeau uses, and we all know how far he hits the ball. And there's a bit of a science to it. So it'll be 5 6 7 do up for the Timberwolves to be Verver, Swift, and McDonald. Now, first baseman, number 22, Craig Verver. Trade River steps in, batting 338 on the season. As he swings into the first pitch, but fouls it to the left side. Timberwolves had two base hits in the top half the inning, one by Hot and Absec. They had two on with no one out, and they come up empty-handed by the strike of Hernan strikeout by Hernandez, and then Vaughn flying out into a double play. Champagne's ready. Here's the pitch. And one misses low. It's one and one on Verver. One pitch is popped up. Foul territory running over as a third baseman. That one's going to land over the stands. Got to play. It's one and two on Verver. I'm going to get it right. As hit in the air center field is Verver. Center field going back, 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 back. And that one's going to get all the way to the wall and bounce off the top of the wall. Verver is going to stop at second base with a leadoff double. That one just kept carrying on him. And the center fielder, Wagner, kept going back, going back. And for a minute, they thought that might just get over the fence. And it almost popped over the fence. It would have been a ground rule double. And I'll bring up Swift. Julian Swift batting 464 on the season. Chance now to tie things up. 
as Champagne will call time. Pitch to Swift. Bounces in there. It's 1-0. One oh pitch to Swift from Champaign is popped up on the infield. Short stop going under, makes the catch. And there's one away. Short stop Ben Berglund. Center fielder, number six, Cannon McDonald. So McDonald steps in with Verber on second base. One out in the top of the second inning. Patriots leading 1-0 over the Timberwolves. First pitch, McDonald is swung on and missed. Strike one. Again, McDonald batting 379 on the season. Donald trying to bring home Ververs. One out here. Oh, one. Verver takes it upstairs. One ball, one strike. Comes the 1-1 one, one, and is swung out of pitch in the dirt. One ball, two strikes now to Cannon McDonald. Champagne's ready. Checks back to runner at second base. 1-2 pitch, misses outside. Two balls, two strikes, McDonald. So right now, there is an incredible four-way tie at the top of the district. And Cedar Park is a part of that. If they win the next three games, their last three, they get a share of that district crown. If Leander loses one, they win it outright. Cedar Park trailing early in this one. District 25, 5A. There's a full count now to McDonald. It's a payoff pitch. On the ground. Third baseman has a throw over to first in time. The second inning out of the inning. Reynolds to McLaughlin. Revere advances on over to third base. For the second straight inning, Cedar Park has runner at third base. As Milanaro steps in. On the ground, right to the shortstop, Berglund, up with it. Threw over to first, and that one's going to be in time. Just barely got him as Milanaro can't believe it. He was looking for his first hit, wanted it to be an RBI, but ruled that one 6-3. So the Timberwolves get the leadoff runner on, but they do not score after one and a half. Our score, Patriots 1, Cedar Park Timberwolves nothing. Listening to Cedar Park Timberwolves baseball on the Vite Media Network.
Bottom half of the second inning here at Eastview High School. Be five, six, and seven due up. As Berglund will step in. Defense once again. Sorry, I had to pause for a little bit there. As Berglund's walk-up song is the little Einstein's theme. You know, we'd rather hear that than Baby Shark. I'll give him that. Berglund steps in, swings and misses at the first pitch from Vaughn. It's Vaughn on the mound, pitching to Brett. Swift at third base, Hernandez at second. Hot, Hernandez at shortstop, Hot at second. Verver at first as 0-1 pitch catches the outside corner. It's 0-2. McDonald and, and I put down McDonald in left field twice. Imagine that. He ain't playing left field. Molinaro in left field. McDonald's playing center field and Gunnar Apsack in right. This pitch misses away. It's one and two on Berglund. There you go. Upstairs and inside. I was wondering what it's like being an umpire when you get a pitch up and inside. Ball's coming right. You hit. Just have to just hope the catcher is going to make that catch. The 2-2 pitch is cut on and missed for strike three. Third strikeout for Adam Vaughn. Now bring up Pullen. Walking up to Biggie Small's Big Papa. Reminds me of Robert Goulet and Will Farrell. You get that joke. Good. As Pullen swings and misses to the first pitch, it is 0 1. Once again, I'm Brian Reed filling in for Brad Cohn on this broadcast. The 0 1 pitch working fast as Vaughn. It's 0 2. Some of y'all might recognize my voice. I do Cedar Park softball. The 0-2 pitch just misses, and Vaughn wanted that one. Bottom half of the second inning, one out, no one on. The one, two, misses way outside with the fastball. The Bar Cedar Park with three hits. Eastview only with the one, and it went over the fence by Champagne. A very borderline pitch went right over the uh, fence. Is on the ground third, but foul. So Pullen waiting for a 2-2 pitch and cut on and missed for strike three. That's the fourth for Vaughn. And I'll bring up the designated hitter, Tanner Bello. Bellu. Tanner Bellu. Thank you, PA guy. Tanner Bellu, oh my goodness. I was walking in, I saw this guy standing around, and I was like, that guy is tall. He's a Big kid. This pitch misses low. Look how high up he has those socks, too. He's got them all the way up to his knees. 1 0 pitch from Vaughn. As line in center field, Hernandez can't come up with it. Kind of falling down trying to catch it. Couldn't really read it well as Below steps in. Or checks in with a two out single. Ellis. Here's Randall Ellis with a runner at first base, two outs. Misses low. As 
with 1 0 pitch. Catches at the corner. Swung on and missed by Ellis. Scoreboard reads one and one. I checked the count as one and two. I got to the umpire's fingers. My scorebook says one and two. Let's see if he gets them right here. Can't get him the chase. Spretz picks it up. Lou at first base. This 2-1 pitch. This is low. It's either a full count, and it is a full count, as the umpire now cracks the scoreboard. Always check the umpire. He knows. Even if you think he doesn't know, he knows. Payoff pitch on the ground, but foul at the third base line. So in action, the Timberwolves bullpen, some light tossing going on over there. Can't quite see the number, but it's a full count to Ellis. Here's the pitch. That one's hitting the air to center field. McDonald coming over underneath it. Now he makes the catch for the final out of the inning. Patriots get a two-out base runner, but they leave him stranded. So after two complete our score, Eastview Patriots one, Cedar Park nothing. Listening to Cedar Park Timberwolves baseball on the Vibe Media Network. I want to let you all know about ACI Protection Services. With ACI Protection Services, it's always safe. It's that simple. ACI Services provides commercial and residential alarm Monitoring services, ACI does the install and monitoring for way less than the large security chains. They've been in business for 21 years. ASI also offers home automation services, repair services for access control, alarms, and CCTV plus security camera installation and repair. That's ACI Protection Services. Call 512-467-2615. I'd like to thank Rosie Vega for being my quality assurance tonight, as I'm pretty sure Brad Cohen would say. He's in his super secret Vipe lair, providing us quality assurance, as I've heard him a few times before. Nine, one, and two, due up for the Timberwolves. Brett swings at the first pitch. Berglund shortstop has to go off his glove and can't make the play at first base. Let's see what they rule that one. They will rule an error on Berglund as Hot will step in now. Hot with a base hit his last time up through the left side. Got all the way to third base after swiping second. Did not score. So for the third straight inning, the Timberwolves had the leadoff runner on, pitch to Hot, shows bunt, pulls the bunt back. They're gonna say that one is in there. Oh, one pitch to Hunt, and going to show bunt. Throwing down on second base, bounces in there. As Bretz will swipe second base. Throw from Quintaia. 
But he made it bounce off the mound, just threw it on the ground a little bit there. So also for the second straight inning, the Timberwolves have a runner at second base with nobody out. One one pitch to Hot shows bunt gets the bunt down. Champagne up, but the throw to first base will be not in time. Hot with the bunt single. Brett moves on over to third base. Now bring up Gunner Absek. Gunner Absek batting 313 on the season. 11 RBIs, 27 runs, scores, 22 base hits. Sorry, 22 singles, seven base hits, seven. Doubles, one triple, no homers, and has walked 12 times on the season. Walk would not be the worst thing in the world here to bring up Ryder Hernandez. See Park looking to tie things up for over the first base. Hot gets back safely. Absack did get a base his last time up on an infield single. As Absack calls time, Champagne may take a little bit too long. So Brett's over at third base, hot at first. Cedar Park in the top of the third inning, trailing one to nothing to these few Patriots. That one's low and away. There's going to let Hot take second base on Fielder's Indifference. And now runners at second and third with nobody out. As that one's grounded up the third baseline, coming home with it. Initially, it's the third baseman Reynolds. As Bretz was thinking about going home, but then was able to get back safely, and Absec is safe at first base. Much what they're going to rule that one. They well, they're one of Fielder's choice. Well, there was no out at home play. Now bring up Ryder Hernandez. Leading the team in RBIs with 24 of them. Sorry, that is actually, or Ampsec is leading the team in RBIs with 27. Actually, Kate Hot's leading the team. I'm looking in the wrong spot. It is Ryder Hernandez of 30 RBIs, batting 337 on the season with two home runs, three triples, 10 doubles, and 15 singles. Walked 11 times and scored 24 runs. Ryder Hernandez also has a sister on the Cedar Park softball team, freshman Ridgely Hernandez. Bases loaded, nobody. Body out for Hernandez. Looking at his RBI total here. First pitch is outside for a ball. Better Hernandez is better. So you probably might be able to hear the dugout of Cedar Park. I'm on the other side. They are making a lot of noise out there. You might learn that from the softball crew. 1 0 pitch misses just outside. Two balls, no strikes to Ryder Hernandez. Showing a lot of patience out there. Hernandez struck out his last time up. For what was the first out of the inning? Two zero pitch. Popped up to center field. Wagner coming over, makes the catch. Brett's tagging. The throw will go to third base as the Timberwolves have tied it up. So Brett scores, Hot remains at second base, Absec at first. So that's 31 RBIs in the season now for Ryder Hernandez. And we're tied at one here in the top of the third inning. Now bring up the pitcher, Adam Vaughn. It's right. Double steal, throw at third base. Getting off the back for a moment there was hot. 
as Reynolds didn't see it, but Hot able to get his hand back on the bag. Difficult to slide on this field. It is a little bit wet outside, and this is a turf field. Much like on a grass field, it does get slippery, but there's no mud. So it's kind of difficult to get a little bit of traction on this sometimes. So when you slide, you can slide around like crazy. So runners at second and third, one out for Vaughn. As Vaughn, that one's going to get away from the pitch from the catcher. Quinton Ia is hot. Hesitated for a moment there, and he'll stay put over at third base. Adam Vaughn batting 250 on the season with eight RBIs, no home runs. Trying to give Timberwolves the lead and help himself out a little bit. The 1-1 one, one pitch. That one's in the air to left field. That's going to get down for a base hit. Hot will score easily, and they're going to send Absec around. That one's still being fished out in the left field line as Vaughn has himself a two-RBI double. First baseman number 22, Trey Verber. As Trey Verber will step in, he doubled his last time up. As we will get a pinch runner in for the Timberwolves. That'll be Hunter Hewitt running for Adam Vaughn. That's quick conversation on the mound. People know me who do softball know that I keep wanting to say circle, not mound. Who is the courtesy runner? So Hunter Hewitt, the courtesy runner. You can have that in high school baseball. Trey River batting 338 on the season with 24 RBIs and three home runs. And double checking that does indeed lead the team. Cedar Park scoring three times this inning, trying to keep the merry go round going. Pitch to Verver, misses low and outside. He would at second base with one out here in the top of the third inning. Timberwolves leading three to one. Now when Mrs. Lone gets away, Hewitt's going to dance on over to third base. He's going to think about coming home as it took a bit for Quinta E to pick that one up, but stays put at third base. And it's 2-0 to Verver for the runner at third with one out. <laughs> Inning got started with the catcher, Bretz, reaching on an error by the shortstop, Berglund. Ball's been right off his glove. Two a pitch to Verver. That one will miss outside. Three balls, no strikes. To Trey Verver. Swift is on deck. Julian Swift. 3 0 pitch. And doesn't take the bat off his shoulder. He'll take first base. First free pass given up by Champagne. First free pass given up by either team. And runners at the corners of one out. For Swift, who popped up to short his last time up. Swift batting 464 on the season. And they're going to call a balk on Champagne, and that will bring home Hewitt. So Hewitt scores. Verver will advance on over to second base on the balk. And I'm not really sure how to write that in my scorebook. I'll just write balk right next to Vaughn's name, which is where Hewitt is. And that makes it 4-1, to one, Timberwolves. So Swift still officially waiting for his first pitch. Here it comes. That one misses. That's five outside the zone by Champagne. Well, 
1-0 pitch. Misses outside. Once again, that's six in a row of missed outside the zone for Tyler Champagne. Make that seven outside the zone. We'll have Cannon McDonald on deck. Champagne's ready, leg kick and a delivery as Swift goes chasing out a pitch upstairs. It's three and one. Three one pitch on the ground. It's gonna be through the left side for a base hit. Verver, they're gonna send him home. The throw to the play will be cut off by the shortstop RBI single for Swift. We got Julian Swift, and that will bring up Cannon McDonald as Verver comes home to score. It's now five to one. Cedar Park Timberwolves. Eighth batter to the plate for the Timberwolves. Cannon McDonald will step in. He grounded out to third his last time up. McDonald, before that bat, was batting 379 on the season with 19 RBIs and one home run. 15 runs scored, five walks. As got a little bit ahead of that pitch. It's 0-1. On the ground, up the middle. Shortstop has it. Throw to first base will be dug out. No, he dropped it. McLaughlin can't dig it out of the dirt. As on the move was Swift. Good job to, limit, to eliminate the double play right there, and the inning will roll on. And they're going to rule that one a base hit for McDonald. The ninth batter stepping up to the plate now is Molinaro. Houston Molinaro still looking for his first hit on the season. Let's have one RBI, three walks, and three runs scored. Joe's bunt gets the bunt down in no man's land. Reynolds up with it, and he can't make the play. As you can hear them all go crazy on the Cedar Park side. As Molinaro picks up his first hit. Swift moves over to third base, McDonald over to second. The bases are loaded as we send the 10th batter to the plate, Josh Bretz, batting 259 on the season with six RBIs. So looking for that first home run though, as Timberwolves have busted my scorecard, but I'll always take it. Always like seeing that. Eight hits overall for the Timberwolves, five runs this inning. First pitch to Bretz is in there for a strike. All right, so looking for that first home run. I think this would be a good time for one. I've never seen a grand slam. I think this would be a good time for one. 0 1 pitch is popped up. Big Laughlin coming over, and he slides and makes the catch. Saying put his swift over at third base, a huge second out of the inning. What a play there by McLaughlin. Back to the top of the order now. It's Kate Hot. Two singles in this one, scored a run earlier this inning. So bases loaded for Kate Hot with a chance to really bust this one open. Pitch misses outside. Kehan, as most of you know, part of that Cedar Park football team made it all the way to the state final up in Jerry Roll. That game was on Vite Media. Brad Cohn was there too. 1 0 pitch. Misses low. You know, when I was told I was going to do Cedar Park, soft, Cedar Park, not softball, I've done a lot of softball, Cedar Park baseball, I knew 
When I messaged Brad, he would have all the stats on all the players because he has them going all the way back since the beginning of time, basically. And I've done one football game, and he has them as far back as you can remember. And sure enough, as soon as I messaged him, he gave me all the stats I can need. So thank you, Brad. As 2-0 pitch misses inside, almost hits hot. It's a 3-0 count, and there's nowhere to put him. Gunnar Apsack on deck. Hot with 28. Sorry, 19. No, 15 RBIs, 28 runs scored. 3-0 pitch in there for a strike as Hot doesn't take the bat off his shoulder. Not a bad play right there. The 3-1 pitch in the air to center field, and that's going to get down for a base hit, and it's going to split the gap. One run's going to score. Two runs are going to score. They're going to send home a third. Hot's going to try over for third base. He's going to hold up at third with a three RBI triple. As Hot busts this one wide open, it's eight to one, Timberwolves. And that might do it for Champagne. Timberwolves have scored eight times in this inning. Cade Hot. Using his speed to get over to third base. There was not even a throw. And that will do it from Champagne. At least I believe so. He's not hit left. He has given the, the ball to coaches. There's someone waiting in the wings. And here he comes. It'll be Caleb Devon. To come in and pitch for the Patriots. As this is high school baseball, we may just see Champaign take a different position this fall. They, he gets warmed up. We'll take a quick break listening to Cedar Park Baseball on the Vibe Media Network. So it'll be Caleb Devin in to pitch for the Patriots. New catcher in as well. Me and number 21, Jaden Reynolds, who was originally playing second base. As we will see, not second base. No, he was playing second base. The Reynolds is actually playing third base as we will see Champagne move on over to second. You're looking in the wrong spot. So Gunnar Apsack steps in. He reached on a base hit his last time up. Came around to score a run. FT on righty matchup. Pitch misses outside for a ball. Kate Hot over at third base after the three RBI triple. And Cedar Park looking to put another nickel in the merry-go-round, keeping this one moving. 1-0 pitch, misses upstairs and outside. Two balls, no strikes. Two-oh pitch. 
in the air to left field. Ellis coming in, slides. He can't come up with it. Hot will dance on home. That's the third hit overall for Avsec. They're going to roll that an error, actually. An error on Ellis. First out, number 14, Ryder Hernandez. I'm not sure how I feel about that one. He had to dive to get that. As Hernandez steps in, struck out and a sacrifice fly in this one. It's 9-1, to one, Timberwolves. First pitch to Hernandez is inside and he swings and misses. Devin steps off the plate. Go back on the first base and Absec is back safely. Can't imagine what it's like to have to pitch on the artificial turf. Especially when it gets wet outside, it be a little bit slippery out there. Owen pitch to Hernandez. He takes it outside. It's one ball, one strike. Denver Wolves have sent 11 batters to the plate. Make that 12 batters, and they've scored nine runs. And the very eventful inning, 1-1 one, one pitch. This is upstairs. Throw down on second base, and it's going to get away from Berglund. Berglund's going to hold on to it as Abseg will swipe second base. As he calls time, maybe slid in there a little bit funky. Either way, it's a 2-1 count to Hernandez with Absec over at second. That one misses low three balls, one strike is Hernandez. Got everything going here in the top half of the inning. So in the beginning of this inning. So I apologize. I apologize, may have gone offline for just a moment. But we're back. With a sacrifice fly. That brought in Bretts over at third base. A 3-1 pitch is on the ground, but foul up the third baseline. It's a 3-2 count now to Ryder Hernandez with Absec over at third base. Second base. Payoff pitch. Fouls it away. We'll do it again at three and two. Cedar Park, last time they met Eastview, they won that game by the final of eight to nothing back in Cedar Park. Devon's ready, kicking. Looks back. Absec over at second base. No one covering, though, so Absec doesn't even. Touch the bag is now coming in as Berglund. They thinking about covering a payoff pitch is lined to left field. That's going to get down for a base hit. They're going to wave home Absec. He will score Hernandez into second base. They're going to stop him at second. No, they're going to send him over to third. The throw into third base will not come. As Berglund did not know he was going to come under third base and it fell out of his glove. And that's an RBI triple for Ryder Hernandez. Make that 10 to one, Timberwolves over the Patriots. Adam Vaughn will step in now. He doubled home two runs earlier this inning and then Hunter Hewitt came in to run for him and scored on a balk. First pitch misses upstairs and outside. Get the coach and the umpire yell at in the Cedar Park dugout to get back in the dugout. Simon ready for a 1-0 pitch. That one misses outside. Two balls, no strikes. Adam Vaughn. Two 
Two-little pitch upstairs and outside. As the wind starts to pick up here in Georgetown. And it's blowing right on my back, so I'm not sure what it's like on the field. You can see the flag on center field. Maybe you can in the camera shot. Yes, you can. As Vaughn doesn't take the bat off his shoulder on a 3-0 pitch. Been two triples in this inning, as well as a double, so a home run would complete the cycle. Although Devon pitches one way inside and walks Adam Vaughn. And that'll bring up Verver. That's a double and a walk in this game. Also scored a run this inning. Every single batter this inning for the Timberwolves has reached. And the only one who hadn't reached so far was Ryder Hernandez. And believe it or not, he got two cracks at this inning as he had the first out of this inning on a sacrifice fly and then a RBI triple. As Verver pops one up to the left side, Ellis racing over and can't come up with this. That one's out of play. Fifteenth batter to the plate for the Timberwolves. They've scored ten runs this inning, and the scoreboard for the inning can't even put double digits in the spot. So it just says zero out there. And right center field if I go to first base will cause the courtesy runner Hewitt. Let me double check that. Is the Hunter Hewitt again? Pinch running or courtesy running for Adam Vaughn. Hernandez at third base. Pitch to Trey Verver, misses outside and away. It's one and one. One, one pitch to Verver. And that's in there for a strike. Delayed call by the umpire. So one-two count to Trey Verver with Hernandez over at third base and Hewitt at first. And what has been a very big inning for the Timberwolves as Devon steps off the rubber. One-two pitch misses way outside as Reynolds had to get out of his crouch to catch that one to prevent another run from coming home. Two two pitch, outside again. It's a full count to Trey Verver. As Julian Swift is on deck. Payoff pitch, upstairs and outside ball four. Back to back walks given up by Devon. Now will bring up Swift once again. So we need to go back and write in my scorebook because I actually have not written down them scoring any runs. I know they have. As Swift fouls that one away. There we go. So bases full of Timberwolves for Julian Swift. A 1-1 pitch. Misses outside. As the Timberwolves... Mustered up hits against Champaign in the first and second inning to the tune of three of them without bringing home any runs. In this inning, the bats have really come alive. 2-1 pitch. This is upstairs and outside. It's 3-1 and one with nowhere to put Swift. McDonald on deck. If 
Vaughn gets the sign. He's ready. Here comes the payoff pitch. As Swift swings and misses through that one. A little bit ahead of it. It's a full count. Hernandez at third base. Vaughn at second. So I make that Hewitt at second base. And Verber over at first. Payoff pitch. In the air to left field. And that's going to get down for a base hit. Hernandez is going to score. Hewitt's going to score. They're going to send home Verber. They're going to hold up Swift at second base. It's a three RBI double for Verber. <laughs> Make that Swift, excuse me. As it is now getting ugly here in Eastview. Cannon McDonald will step in. McDonald with a base hit and a run scored as Devin's pitch just misses outside. This is the 16th batter Timberwolves have sent to the plate this inning as McDonald fouls one away. It's one and one. Tim Wolves have nine hits this inning. Nine. As Devon checks back the runner at second base. Scoring 13 runs on nine hits. And a couple errors as well as 1-1 one, one pitch misses outside of McDonald. Nine hits, three walks, two errors. So much going on, it's kind of hard for me to keep track of it. Scoreboard trying to keep track with the score out there. 2-1 pitch, misses outside again to McDonald's, 3-1. and one. As Molinaro, who had his first base hit of the season, according to Brad Cohn's stats. And the dugout did go crazy out there. It was a bunt single, he did come around to score. Is on deck, 3-1 pitch, is cut on and missed by McDonald. It's a full count. Payoff pitch. Popped in the air to right field. Huerta coming over, and that one's gonna run. He's gonna run out of real estate. And we'll do it again at three and two. As Doug get as the umpire gets some new baseballs from the dugout. McDonald ready now for a payoff pitch from Devin. Here it comes. Upstairs, ball four. That's the third walk thrown by Devin. In relief of Champagne's, you may see another pitching change this inning. Number 20, Molinaro with a batter. As Molinaro will step in with two runners on. They're grabbing his first base hit of the season on a bunt single. As Timberwolves have more runs than they have hits. And that will do it for Devon. Let's check the new guy. It's the big guy, the designated hitter, Tanner Bello. He will step in pitching now for the Patriots, trying to get that elusive last out of the inning. Since getting that second out by Bretts, the Timberwolves have scored one, two, three, four, five runs after picking up that second out. In the process, they have grabbed two triples, one error, a double, and three walks, scoring five times. Just to reiterate, every single batter for the Timberwolves has not only reached, they have scored this inning. As the bats have not just come alive in this inning, they are scorching, volcanic even. 
an unreal display by the Cedar Park Timberwolves. So while Bellow is warming up, I'll let you guys know about Toyota of Cedar Park. Experience the difference of Toyota of Cedar Park. They're located on 183, just across the HEB Center. Get your best Toyota deals at Toyota of Cedar Park. Make your car buying experience a pleasure at Toyota of Cedar Park. They don't just want to sell you a car. They'll work hard to sell you a car, sell you cars for life. That's Toyota of Cedar Park, 5600 183A in Cedar Park. As Molinaro will step in. can change his spot where it says hit to now one hit on the season. As Molinari looks at a pitch that catches the outside corner. It's 1-0. Swift over at second base, McDonald at first. Pitch misses outside. One ball, one strike. If Molinaro gets on, they'll bring up Bretts, and that will be the 18th, the 18th batter for the Timberwolves. 1-1 one, one pitch to Molinaro as he fouls one back and hits the very top of the fence back there. It's 1-2. and two. It's Many times this inning, the Patriots have been one strike away from ending it and so far, every single time, the Timberwolves have kept it alive. 1-2 pitch. Misses outside. Good take there by Molinaro. It's 2-2. Two and two. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Misses low, good take there by Molinaro, and he's worked the count full. Brett's on deck. Payoff pitch. Misses outside, ball four. Bases once again full of Timberwolves. And for the third time this inning, the inning, Brett's will have an at-bat. The 18th batter for the Timberwolves. As the inning started with Bretts on a grounder to Berkeley at shortstop. Bretts the batter. Reaching on an error. And since then, it's been like hot knife through butter. Popped out in his previous at bat this inning. As that pitch misses low, gets away from Reynolds for a little bit, but everyone stays put. By the by, the MLB record for most hits in an inning is four. I forget who it was, but it was set by a player for the Red Sox against the Marlins in 2003. And the Red Sox that game, they scored 10 runs in the first inning before a single out had been recorded. And that was in Fenway. As 2-0 pitch to Bretz is swung on him as a very hard swing. It's 2-1. Very exciting performance there by the Red Sox. However, it'd be the Marlins that got the last laugh as they won the World Series that season, beating the Yankees. 2-1 pitch. Misses outside. It's 3-1. Kate Hotz on deck, and he is 3-for-3 three three in the ballgame. He's 2-for-2 two two this inning. That one's in there for a strike as Brett's taking all the way. There have been four walks thrown by Patriots pitchers this inning. 3-2 pitch is swung on and missed for strike three. And mercifully for the Patriots, the inning is over. However, the Timberwolves completely light up the scoreboard and score 13 runs on nine hits after two and a half. Our score, Timberwolves 13, the Patriots 1.
You're listening to Cedar Park Timberwolves Baseball on the Vibe Media Network. I got to do some math. <laughs> Bottom of the third inning here at Eastview High School. New pitcher in for the Cedar Park Timberwolves. It'll be Hunter Hewitt, who courtesy ran for Adam Vaughn twice in that third inning. I'm going to give you the stats on Hunter Hewitt. Comes into this game with five appearances, one and one. Game started nine appearances, one and one record with a 6.63 ERA. Line one and two due up for the Patriots, and it'll be Wagner, Huerta, and Champagne. Make that correction, that'll be Peyton Adams due up. That's why you need defensive changes as I come across them for the Timberwolves. So far, everything looks to be. Pretty similar. Only difference is Hewitt is on the mound. Pitching to Peyton Adams. As first pitch to Adams misses upstairs for a ball. So Adam Vaughn, as he is somewhere in the outfield, leaves this game. Allowing one run on two hits, and that one run coming on a Tyler Champagne homer that left just over the left field foul pole. And that person still think may have gone foul, but when you lean 13 and one, can't be complaining too much as Adams fouls that one at home plate. Two one pitch. Fouls it away again. It's two and two. The two two pitch to Adams. Upstairs and outside. It's a full count to Peyton Adams. Hunter Hewitt scoring two runs. In the third inning, as Adams fouls into one, knows that one away. Payoff pitch from Hunter Hewitt on the ground. Hernandez has it. Throws over to first in time. For the first out inning, that was Hernandez to Trey Verver. Now bring up Huerta, who struck out his previous appearance.
There's 1 0 pitch to Huerta misses. Upstairs, it's 2 0. Oh. Bottom of the third inning, no one on, one out. Timberwolves in front, 13 1. 2 0 oh pitch is cut on and missed at a pitch in the dirt. Once again, Hewitt gets where to the chase. This will be Tyler Champagne is on deck for the Patriots. Upstairs trying to get at the numbers. It's a full count. Payoff pitch. In there for strike three, a delayed call by the umpire. So first strikeout for Hewitt. Second out of the inning, they'll bring up Tyler Champagne. Has one of two hits for the Patriots. A home run to left field. If not for that, this game would be 13. And that was Swift <laughs> tripped and fell over at third base. Sorry, Julian, I caught you. As Hewitt throws a strike in there. And it catches the corner. As a one pitch in there for a strike. Believe it or not, there has not been a 1-2-3 inning so far by either team. The 0-2 pitch from Hewitt. Hitting the air to center field, McDonald racing back, still going back, still going back, and he can't come up with it as that one one hops the wall. So Champagne stays of that one as McDonald was playing a little bit shallow and couldn't come up with it, but able to get to it quickly enough to hold Champagne to a single, sorry, to a double. McKinney McLaughlin steps in. And listing the toy box this time. Man, that, oof. Dude, you take me back right there, man. That is, oh my goodness. I think it came into the, uh... oh man, that was good. He went ready from the stretch. That was it low. Ball, no strikes. Big Laughlin. One zero pitch misses low again. Picked up by Brett, trying to hold the runner at. Second base, and he will. As Hewitt checks back the runner at second base, 2-0 pitch, bounces in there. It gets away from Brett's. He can't find it, and Champagne will wind up over at third base. That's three pitches in a row delivered by Hewitt that have been spiked into the ground somewhat. Three-o pitch. Now it misses outside. Ball four. First walk given up by the Timberwolves. Runners at the corners of two out. Now let's check the batter here. It should be Jaden Reynolds, and it'll be Jaden Reynolds. He struck out swinging in his only appearance back in the first inning. That one bounces in there. Brett's able to come up with it. 
So McLaughlin over at first base, Champagne at third. He pitcher turned shortstop only in high school baseball. Only in high school baseball as we'll see the coach come out and have a conversation with Hewitt. He's having a little bit of some command issues right now. So conversation over coach with a little bit of a smile on his face. So Hewitt ready to deliver a 1-0 pitch. Upstairs and inside, but Every coach said, release it just a little bit sooner. Comes the 2-0 pitch. That one's lined in the left field. Molinari racing over, can't come up with it, and it gets all the way to the wall. Champagne will score. They're going to send home McLaughlin. The throw to the plate will be not in time. It gets over the head of the catcher, Bretz. It's a two-RBI triple for Reynolds. A lot of triples in this one. It is now 13 to three, Timberwolves. The scoreboard says 13 to two, my scorebook says 13 to three. As pitch to Berglund. Misses low and inside. Berglund struck out swinging his last time up. So after Hewitt gets two quick outs on the ground out and the strikeout, a little bit of a command issues here. Well, that one catches the zone. He's allowed three batters in a row to reach one on a double, a walk, and a triple. So one one pitch is swung on and missed. It's one and two. Now the scoreboard better reflects what I have. Here comes the one, two. On the ground, slow roller, third baseman up with it. Throw over to first in time for the final out of the inning. Swift over to Verver. The Timberwolves add two on the board on the Reynolds two RBI triple. After three complete, our score Timberwolves 13, Patriots three. You're listening to Cedar Park Baseball on the Vibe Media Network. Top of the fourth inning here at East U High School. And anybody who's familiar with the scorebook knows that when they bat around, you basically go to the next inning and you scratch off where it says the next inning and write the current inning. I had to do that twice. Twice on my scorebook. So three times actually. So where it says the sixth inning, I am currently writing the fourth inning, which means by the time we get to the seventh inning, I will have run out of room. That's not right. No, by the time I get to the ninth inning, I will have just enough time unless this game for some reason unless this game goes to extra innings. I hope not. 
as Hot steps in. He is three for three tonight with two singles and a three RBI triple. He scored two runs back in that 13-run third inning as Hot looks at one inside and low. One one pitch. Popped up. Ellis coming in. Underneath it now makes the catch, and for the first time tonight, Hot has been retired. I'll bring up Gunner Absek. Absek reaching three times tonight on two singles, reached on an error. Although well, personally, I would have rolled that one a base hit myself as Ellis had to slide to make that catch and out of his glove. He has scored twice, both times in the previous inning. First pitch is upstairs and outside for a ball. One zero pitch. Down low, it's two balls, no strikes. Two zero pitch is swung on in the air, left field. Ellis, underneath it, makes the catch. For the second out of the inning. Ryder Hernandez steps in. Hernandez with a three RBI triple. That really buzzed this one out back in the third inning. Also with a sacrifice fly. Correction, actually it was a two RBI triple. That one bounced in there and gets away from the catcher, Reynolds. But he did have three RBIs in the inning. As Hunter Hewitt is on deck. One-0 pitch to Hernandez. Misses outside. As Bellows pitches, misses inside again. Backed off Hernandez just a little bit. 3-0 pitch as Hernandez pops it up. Champagne underneath and now it gives way to the shortstop, Berglund, who makes the catch for the final out of the inning. One, two, three, top of the third, top of the fourth inning, I should say. After three and a half, our score, Cedar Park Timberwolves 13, the Patriots three. You're listening to Cedar Park Timberwolves baseball on the Vibe Media Network. Hey, well, I got you here. Let me let you tell you guys about Thundercloud Subs. Thundercloud Subs is a neighborhood sub shop with a rich tradition of good-natured people serving fresh, fast, and healthy food in a quirky and fun atmosphere. Founded in Austin in 1975, Thundercloud has the simple philosophy of selling a great sub at a reasonable price with superb ingredients, scratch-baked bread, meats, cheeses, and produce sliced fresh every day. All these ingredients come together to create the one and only Thundercloud Sub. At four points and at 700 East West Dome, the White Stone and Cedar Park, make, may I say it one more time, four points at 700 East White Stone in Cedar Park. Thundercloud subs, one of those things you love about Austin. Hunter Hewitt still on the mound for the Timberwolves. You have two runs in the third inning. However, when you're leading by, at the time, 12 runs, now 10 runs, you can afford to give up just a few. It'll be six, seven, and eight due up before the Patriots. Me, the Ryan Pullen stepping in, who struck out his last time up, and as well as Tanner Bello, who was a designated hitter, then came out, and should be Rendell Ellis. Five. Six, seven, and eight. And now I've just been informed that there is a new pitcher. I could not see his number. That is indeed Ben Cooper. Number 15. Number two, Ryan Pullen, the batter. Cooper with a 3.86 ERA 
on the season. It was 1-1, one, 1-0 one, one oh pitch, catches the corner, making it 1-1. One, one. one pitch, tries to float it in there, but it's a bit high and inside. It is one in, sorry, two and one. Two one pitch misses outside, three balls, one strike to Pullen. Three one pitch, catches the corner. It's a full count now to Pullen. That's three two pitch misses outside. It's a lead off walk for the Patriots. Hannah Bello, the DH turn hitter, much like Jose Otani. Had a single his last time up back in the second inning, was left stranded. As Bello pops one up, River coming over, slides as he overran that one. And couldn't come up with it in foul territory. I mean, he just lost it up there. Almost have to remember with the way that the ground is out here. It is wet. It's definitely dried up, but it's still very overcast. It is wet. His feet may have just slid underneath him. So Bello gets a little bit lucky. He'll get another, he'll get another chance. Like kicking the pitch from Cooper. That one just misses. No call by the umpire. One one pitch. Popped up and out of play. It's one and two. One two pitch. That one almost gets away from Brett's able to come up to it. As the pitch was in the dirt, it's two and two. The two two pitch on the ground, but foul at the third baseline will do it again. So one on, no one out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Timberwolves leading the Patriots 13 to three. Two two pitches, swung on and missed, strike three. First strike out for Cooper, first out of the inning. And there's one away and I'll bring up Ellis who flew out to center field in his previous appearance. As Ellis shows bunt, pulls the bunt back, takes one low. It's one ball, no strikes. Oh, no pitch is popped up, but it's in no man's land. Coming in, sliding, catches Molinaro. As Molinaro was playing a little bit deep, had to slide on his back to make that catch. A big second out of this inning. Now I'll bring up Peyton Adams. Grounded out to Ryder Hernandez his last time up. Pulling at first base after a leadoff walk. As Cooper was able to strike out Bellow and get Ellis to fly out to left field. Pitch to Adams is low and outside for a ball. Oh, 
1-0 pitch is swung on and miss. <laughs> As he had Adams way out in front of that one. On one pitch, misses upstairs and outside. It's two balls, one strike. Scooper checks back the runner at first base. Comes the 2 1. Swung on and missed. It's a 2 2. So far tonight, the Timberwolves lead by 10 runs. And the Patriots have yet to go down 1-2-3 in an inning. 2-2 two -two pitch. In there for strike three. And Cooper knew he was off the mound before he was even in Brett's hands. Two strikeouts in the inning after four complete. Our score is 13-3 Timberwolves over Patriots. You're listening to Cedar Park Timberwolves Baseball on the Vite Media Network. And hey, well, I got you here. Let me tell you guys about our sponsor, Academy Sports and Outdoors, for all the ways you love to play. Academy Sports and Outdoors makes it easier than ever to gear up and have fun out there. Get free shipping on your favorite brands at academy.com or get free curbside or in-store pickup at your Academy store. Gear up this spring at Academy Sports and Outdoors. We'll be right back listening to Cedar Park Timberwolves Baseball on the Vite Media Network. Top of the fifth inning here at Eastview High School. Ben Cooper steps in. And believe it or not, I don't have any information on Ben Cooper. However, he just lined a base hit into left center field, and it gets away from the center fielder McDonald. He was going to try for second base, but able to get it back in just in time. So Cooper gets in that bat. And there's no info on him. So I'm going to go ahead and say he's batting 1,000 on the season. I like the sound of that. I'm trying to see if they want to do a courtesy runner for Cooper. And they will do a courtesy runner for him as he's heading towards the dugout. So we'll get... Mason Pedaney in as Blake Burton will step in. He's bad and does not have a hit this season in two plate appearances. Unless he looks at one outside. Batting in place of Trey Verver, who had. Three hits. That one gets away from the catcher, Quintaia. Make that Reynolds, excuse me. We got the wrong look at it made. It's 2 0 to Blake Burton. As the 2-0 pitch to Burton misses upstairs and outside. Runner at second base. That's Pedaney. As the 3-0 pitch to Burton misses outside, ball four. Mm 
Mary Robinson sitting about her. To apologize, I missed the number on that one. I have a new batter in replacing Swift. I'll catch the number as soon as I can. First pitch in there for a strike. That'll be oh man, Murray Robinson. So Robinson fouls one away. It's zero and two. Is in the 0 and 2. Now it's 1 and 1. And the umpire called that first pitch a strike. He did not. No one out. Runners at first and second. That's Burton and Cooper. Burton at first. Cooper over at second. Not Cooper. Pinani over at second base. And now it's 2 1. Bello steps off the mound. The Timberwolves like to wear different numbers depending on what jersey they're wearing. As the umpire was correcting the count, and that was his second base umpire. There's only two umpires here. And actually, that was a strikeout of Robinson. As Jack Newman will step in now for McDonald. That pitch misses outside. One ball, no strikes. Good job there by second base umpire to come in and get that call right. I think even Bella was like, I think that was a strikeout. We all were confused about what the count was. This 1 0 pitch as. Newman swings and misses. It's one and one. Jack Newman batting three, thirty-three on the season. Six at bats, and two base hits, a single and a double. One-one pitch is swung on and missed. It's one and two. To Jack Newman. One two pitch. Swung on and missed for strike three. Second. All right, make that the second strike out of the inning for Bello. And there's two away for Cole Kruger. Cole Kruger, the batter. Kruger batting 200 on the season. Two on, two out. First pitch, and lefty takes one in there for a strike. So Bedani over at second base. Blake Burton over at first after a single and a walk. Back to back strikeouts for Bello. A one pitch misses outside. Good take there by Kruger. It's one and one. One one pitch misses low. New balls, one strike on Kruger. Kruger lines one to right field. Huerta going back underneath it now. Still going back. He makes the catch just in front of the warning track for the final out of the inning. Huerta gives it a like Kruger gives it a ride. But he goes down. Timberwolves get two on, but they do not score. We'll head to the bottom half of the third inning. Our score, Timberwolves three. Patriots see, Timberwolves 13, Patriots three. You're listening to Cedar Park Timberwolves baseball on the Vibe Media Network.
Bottom half of the fifth inning here at Eastview High School. One, two, and three due up for the Patriots. Taylor Huerta steps in now, walking up to Soldier Boy. Get my swag on. And looks at a pitch from We're Cooper sure on the corner. A one pitch is popped up. Should get out of play, and it will. As if that one was caught, I have to take the umpire's word for it as it was just out of my camera shot. Out of my line of sight, I should say. So it's 0-2 count on Huerta, who is 0-2 tonight with a couple strikeouts. And make that three strikeouts. Hat trick for Huerta. Now bring up Tyler Champagne, who's hit the, bar, hit the ball hard both times, scored two runs, has had a homer and a double. As Cooper tries to float one in there, but it's high and inside. It's 1-0. Is outside again. Two balls, no strikes to Champagne. Defense remains relatively unchanged. As far as I can tell, it's hard to see the numbers from out here as 2-0 pitch misses outside. Three balls, no strikes. She really invests in a wonderful invention that's called a pair of binoculars. 3-0 pitch misses low and outside. Ball four. Every single inning in this game, the Patriots have had base runners. As McLaughlin will step in, walked his last time up and came around to score a run on the Reynolds triple. As Cooper misses upstairs, that's now five straight outside the zone. The runner goes, throw on second base. Hernandez has it, can't come up with it. As Champagne will steal second base with one out. The throw was good. Duo pitch, misses outside. It's three balls, no strikes to McLaughlin. Three zero pitch, in there for a strike as McLaughlin looked like he's about to throw the bat. Rio pitch. That one's in there for a strike. So Cooper was behind 3-0, and is now thrown two in the zone. Has worked the count full. Champagne at second base, Bob in the fifth inning, one out. Timberwolves leading by 10. Leg kick and a delivery on the ground, but foul at the third baseline as McLaughlin just a little bit ahead of that one. The 3-2, runner goes, and that one's fouled away. Laughlin well, waiting for a 3-2 pitch from Cooper. Here it comes, and he takes that one outside, ball four. 
So good at bat there by McLaughlin. Number 21, Jaden Reynolds. I'll bring up Jaden Reynolds. Struck out and had a two RBI triple. Means new balls for the umpire. As Brett's off a conversation with McLaughlin on the mound. By Cooper on the mound, should send McLaughlin's over at first base, Champagne at second. And he began with a strikeout to Huerta. And Cooper having a little bit of some command issues. There is action going on in the bullpen for the Timberwolves. Right over to second base as Hernandez had to get over quickly. Pitch misses outside, throw on second base will be not in time. As that's two steals in the inning for Tyler Champagne. He's having himself a pretty good night. Reaching three times, stealing two bases, and with a home run and a double. One zero pitch is swung on and missed. Good pitch there by Cooper, getting the cleanup here to swing over that one. One one, floats it in there. Good pitch there by Cooper. It's one and two. Comes the one two pitch, swung on and missed for strike three. Blew a fastball right by him, second strike out of the inning. So Jesus Santana will step in now in placement of Ben Berglund. First pitch in there for a strike on the corner. Oh, one pitch misses low to Santana. One one pitch is on the ground up mill. Slow roller. Hernandez has it, has to get rid of it quickly. Throw to first base will be in time, beating the diving Jesus Santana. The Patriots get two on with one out, and they do not score. And that will do it. As the umpires will call it after five innings, the Timberwolves score all 13 runs in one inning, getting nine hits in the inning, 13 hits overall. And they win this one by a final of 13 to three. I'm gonna do a little bit of a quick post game, but give me just a brief moment to add it all up. You're listening to Cedar Park, Timberwolves Baseball on the Vibe Media Network. Keep it here.
Welcome back to Cedar Park Timberwolves Baseball on the Vibe Media Network. I'll give you guys a brief post game, as brief as I, not as brief as I can make it, but there's just so much going on, so many stats to keep track of that I may have lost count myself. But we do know the big one. Timberwolves scoring 13 runs on 13 hits. They had two runs in the top half of the first inning. So two hits in the first half of the top inning, not able to bring them home after a Hernandez strikeout and a Adam Vaughn flyout double play on a brilliant throw by the right fielder. Huerta. And then in the second inning, they had a leadoff double by Verver, but unable to bring him home. And then in the third, in the third inning is when the floodgates opened up. It began with a Brett um, reaching on an error by the second baseman. By the shortstop. I keep getting that backwards. I don't know why. Second error. And then every single Timberwolves batter reached. With, on nine hits, there was a grand total of five walks in that inning, including two by Verver in the inning. Every single Timberwolves batter scored, and they left the bases loaded. After that, the Timberwolves only got one hit, and they left a grand total of seven runners stranded throughout the entire ballgame. They scored 13 runs, leaving seven runners runners stranded so that will do it from us here at cedar park for cedar park timberwolves winning this on final 13 to 3 they have two more games left on the schedule win those two and they get at least a district crown if leander loses one and the cedar park wins the next three they will win the district crown outright so thank you for listening to me listening let me yeah Thank you for allowing me into your homes, your car, wherever you're listening to this game. Basement for Brad Cohen. Brad, thanks for letting me broadcast this game. I'm not sure what you were doing tonight, but you know what? You missed a good one there, buddy. And thanks again for all the help you give me, all the stats and stuff. I really appreciate it. And thank you to my QA for Quality Assurance, Rosie Baker, for making sure everything's sounding oh so good up there in Vibe Land. And that will be all from us here at Eastview High School, our final. The Cedar Park Timberwolves 13, the Eastview Georgetown Patriots 3. My name is Brian Reed, reminding you to please wash your hands. Please wear a mask if you choose to go out. Please stay safe, and I will catch you all next time. Thank you very much.